U.S. forces in Syria came under rocket fire on Monday, just one day after American fighter jets carried out airstrikes on Iran-backed militia groups in Iraq and Syria. A U.S. military spokesman said there were no injuries and later tweeted that U.S. troops responded by conducting counter-battery artillery fire. The Iraqi government is condemning the U.S. air raid, calling it a violation of the country's sovereignty, adding it would study legal options to stop it from happening again. NBC News correspondent Ali Arouzi joins us now from Tehran. So, Ali, a lot of countries involved here, Iraq, Syria, but you're there in Iran. What has been the reaction there in Iran to these U.S. strikes? Good morning, Joe. Well, we've only heard from the foreign ministry spokesperson so far who condemned the airstrike, saying the United States is taking the wrong path in the region and that Washington is continuing the failed legacy of the previous administration. He said uh, instead of creating tensions and problems in the region, the U.S. should leave the region and let people establish their own security without Washington interfering, which only causes disruptions. Other than that, officials here have been uncharacteristically silent about the airstrikes. Of course, the militias in Iraq and Syria vowed revenge. They made good on that threat, obviously. So, Ali, are there any signs that Iran-backed militia groups could step up attacks on U.S. interests in the region in the wake of these airstrikes? Well, there's been an alarming increase recently in the number of attacks by Iranian-backed militias on U.S. assets, attacks that have become more sophisticated, using more advanced hardware. And the reality is, Joe, that they will probably continue with varying degrees of severity, depending on the, on the political climate, because ultimately their goal is to expel all U.S. troops from the region. Look, it was only last week that the Hashd al-Shabi militia had a military-style parade in Iraq showing off their hardware, including tanks and drones, which are probably supplied by Iran. Uh, they look more powerful than the Iraqi army. And you don't flex that kind of military power if you don't want to send a message to the U.S. Uh, that they're not welcome. Uh, by and large, the attacks have been contained, but the smallest miscalculation could have massive implications for both Iraq, Iran, and the United States. And, Ali, any idea at this point, could this latest escalation in tensions have any impact at all on nuclear talks with Iran? Uh, ultimately, I don't think this will have a major impact on talks with, uh, with on Iran's nuclear program. If Iran wanted to make a bigger deal out of this, uh, there would have been a much stronger threatening statement by a senior Revolutionary Guard commander vowing revenge. Uh, there wasn't one, which is an indication that they don't want talks to fall apart. Iran has been pushing the envelope with the Biden administration to figure out their boundaries, see how far they can go. And they were probably expecting a retaliatory attack, considering how many attacks there have been by Iranian-backed militias over the last couple of months. Clearly, the White House doesn't want to derail talks either. Jen Psaki said that even though Iran's behavior is extremely problematic, they're seeing an opportunity to move forward with negotiations. All right. Ali Arouzi reporting from Tehran. Ali, thanks so much.